Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Jay Shetty? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Jay Shetty, then move to my analysis. Jay Shetty was born on September 6, 1987, in London, England. In 2010, after going to college, Jay spent about three years studying Hinduism in India and in England. After this, he started working for an information technology firm as a social media coach for company executives. In 2016, Jay became a content creator. He was hired by Huffington Post to produce videos about various topics, including relationships. In 2017, Jay started releasing videos related to health and wellness on YouTube and Facebook. Within a couple of years, he had millions of followers. In 2019, he started a podcast called On Purpose, which went on to have massive success. According to Forbes, it was the number one health podcast. In 2020, Jay published a self-help book titled Think Like a Monk, in which he offers tips based on his time studying Hinduism. The book was a bestseller. The same year, Jay started an online learning platform called the Jay Shetty Certification School. In 2022, Jay became the chief purpose officer for a software company called Calm, as in the phrase, calm down. This company produces meditation products of some sort. In 2023, Jay published a book titled Eight Rules of Love, how to find it, keep it, and let it go. Just like his earlier book, this one performed very well as far as sales. With all his various business ventures and popularity, Jay Shetty appears to be an unstoppable, multi-million dollar self-help guru. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Jay Shetty has achieved unbelievable success on social media. At the time I am making this video, he has almost 5 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, titled Jay Shetty. The channel has been viewed over 300 million times and averages about 3 million views a month. Here are a few video titles that sum up his channel pretty well. Follow Your Intuition, How to Find and Keep Love, Stop Doubting Yourself, Holding On Can Hold You Back, and Let's Talk About Mental Health. Jay also has another channel titled Jay Shetty Podcast, which has over 2.6 million subscribers and has been viewed almost 220 million times. This channel averages about 14 million views a month. These videos feature interviews with people like Michelle Obama, Paris Hilton, Tom Holland, Selena Gomez, Oprah Winfrey, Kim Kardashian, and Joe Biden. Item number two. In addition to social media fame, Jay has also had success with the mainstream media, He's appeared on many television shows, including Ellen DeGeneres and The View. In 2022, he presided over the wedding of Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. Item number three, a key part of Jay's success has been his origin story. When he was young, he was active in the Hare Krishna movement, but this is something he really doesn't talk about anymore. It appears as though he wants to distance himself from that religious belief system. Jay claimed that he met a monk sometime around 2007 and followed him around the United Kingdom on a lecture circuit. He spent a few summers in India as an intern and trained with the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. In 2010, Jay moved to Mumbai, India full-time and started living as a monk. He remained there until 2013. During his three years as a monk, he gave up material goods and led a simple lifestyle. After experiencing a spiritual awakening, Jay realized that his life's calling extended far beyond himself. Jay was determined to share his amazing knowledge with humanity. The origin story Jay put forward has fascinated many people. He entered this life of spiritual training and simplicity. Cut off from the world for three years, he emerged as a fountain of wisdom who was destined to be glorified and exalted. He managed to bridge the gap between ancient spiritual beliefs and the modern, rapidly changing technological world. Jay's origin story is interesting, but there are some problems with it. At the end of February 2024, 
An article was published in The Guardian titled, Uncovering the Higher Truth of Jay Shetty. This article highlighted some statements made by Jay that don't make a lot of sense. For example, in Jay's first book, he claimed that he was 18 years old when he met the monk who changed his life. This is the one he shadowed on the lecture circuit. Considering how Jay was born in 1987, he would have been 18 in 2005. But now he's saying he met the monk in 2007. Jay's story about spending three years in India studying Hinduism may not be true. Some people who knew Jay said that during the time he claimed he was in India, they saw him in a town near London. According to a blog Jay kept, he initially spent less than four months in India. These may just be innocent discrepancies, but Jay's credibility has faced other challenges unrelated to his origin story. This brings me to item number four. As I mentioned, Jay started his own online platform called the Jay Shetty Certification School. Purportedly, the school offers roughly the equivalent of a master's degree in life coaching. At one time, the brochure for the school indicated the Office of Qualifications and Examinations Regulation approved and regulated the program. Furthermore, the school implied that if a student earned a degree, they could go to certain colleges and take a few more courses and get a master's degree. As it turns out, both of these claims were false. The accrediting body did not approve the program, and the other colleges never heard of Jay's school. The program cost $7,400, so Jay has earned a substantial amount of money teaching the magical secrets of life coaching. As I've talked about in other videos, there is no universally recognized accreditation for the life coaching profession. The industry exists with self-certification and without government licensure or regulation. In order to become a life coach, there is no need to take college courses. The transformation into a life coach can be facilitated quite easily. A person only needs to declare themselves to be a life coach or an approximation. This could be accomplished in many ways, including saying one of the following statements. I am a life coach. My vibrational frequency matches that of a transformation strategist. Or, guess who just unlocked the secrets of the universe? It's me. Unfortunately, life coaching professionals often run into problems by straying into the area of mental health. Initially, they might talk about topics like searching for purpose in life, increasing motivation, or becoming one with the universe. However, invariably, many wander into topics like depression, anxiety, paranoia, psychosis, obsessions, compulsions, trauma, substance use, and personality pathology. These are areas better left to licensed and qualified mental health professionals. Some people might look at the school that Jay Shetty operates and say, what's the harm? Why is it ill-advised for him to issue these unaccredited degrees in life coaching? There are a few problems with this behavior, but one critical concern is how accredited educational programs for psychotherapy screen for extreme personality traits, whereas unaccredited programs do not. Anybody can get a degree from a program that is not accredited. Narcissistic, antisocial, borderline, histrionic, dependent, avoidant, paranoid, and other personality features represent an area of concern as far as becoming a psychotherapist. Without gatekeeping in the mental health treatment professions, clients would be harmed. This brings me to item number five. Jay Shetty creates a lot of content on mental health, including YouTube videos. At one point, his website indicated that he had a degree in behavioral science, but later it said management science. In 2023, Jay interviewed President Joe Biden in the White House on the topic of mental health initiatives taken by the administration. There's this sense that Jay desires to represent himself as a mental health professional, or at least as someone with a formal education in mental health, but neither of these are true. This connects back to what I said before. Invariably, life coaches cross the line into mental health. There's really no way to escape this dilemma. Item number six, like many self-help gurus, Jay offers a lot of vague and unhelpful spiritual advice, some of which appears to have been influenced by New Age philosophy. There was a stage that Jay went through where he took a lot of his advice and stories from other people and posted it on his social media accounts as if he came up with the ideas. He did not get permission from the content creators and he did not give attribution. Some of the content was taken word for word from these other creators. Here we see that Jay not only promoted nonsense, 
but he took that nonsense from someone else. It's pretty bad when someone is too lazy to make up quasi-random words. Item number seven. I was curious about what Jay wrote in his extremely successful books. When I looked through them, it was clear they contained the same word salad that is typical for self-help spiritual gurus. The books can be summarized very quickly. For Jay's first book, here are the important points. Jay is amazing. Negativity is bad. Forgive yourself. Defeat fear by detaching. Live intentionally. Grow. Be mindful. Reframe. Practice humility. And remember to breathe. That last one is particularly important when examining Jay's book because it suffocates the reader with filler words and meaningless expressions. Jay's second book is even easier to summarize. Find yourself in solitude and discover your values. That's pretty much it. Jay managed to make millions of dollars from writing in circles. Now moving to my final item, number eight. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. One could argue that Jay is full of shetty. Like all self-help gurus, he promotes simplistic platitudes and mind-numbing sound bites that are completely useless. They are packaged in such a way that people find them comforting, reassuring, insightful, or otherwise beneficial. These people are perceiving meanings in the words which do not exist, because Jay has no idea what he's talking about. Before people realize that Jay lied about his origin story and misled people with his online learning platform, he was already wealthy and famous. Jay lives in an $8.4 million house in California and probably has more money than he knows what to do with. In the life coaching game, Jay Shetty is a winner. People thought that he was unlocking their infinite potential by exploring ancient wisdom or helping them to harmonize with the cosmic orchestra. But in reality, he was unlocking their bank account and harmonizing their money with his aspirational vibrations. The only sound that can be heard on this transcendent journey is Jay's celestial laughter echoing through the halls of eternity. Those are my thoughts on the case of Jay Shetty. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.